Good morning. We welcome you to beautiful Savior Lutheran Church. It's good to worship with you here this morning. If you're joining us online, uh, welcome to you as well as you join us for worship. Today, Pastor Derek's going to be talking about uh, the most important question, and it is not what is for brunch today, okay? Just to be clear, it's the question you see there on the screen, who do you say that I am? I'm looking forward to Pastor Derek unpacking that for us in our time together today. So it's good to be together. Would you please stand? And would you take a moment and greet each other this morning? So what is everybody having for brunch? No, I'm just kidding. Let's worship today in the name of our God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's sing.
continue with our confession and forgiveness. And so, Lord, as broken people, uh, we come before you in need of your unchanging grace and promises. And so we take a moment this morning for uh, personal prayer and to confess our sins before our God in silence this morning. Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you in both the things that we have done against your will and in those things to which you have called us to represent you that we have not done. As a God of grace, you forgive all those who confess their sins before you with a repentant heart. And I boldly proclaim that all of you are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now we turn from these sins and walk in the light of our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant us to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the rock upon whom our lives are built. Help us rest securely in your promises and find strength in your mighty deliverance. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Luke. I'd like the children to come on down for the game show. Who? right there. And today, we're going to play Who Am I? We're going to get this. We do, however, have one disclaimer. While Pastor Derek's views and opinions do, ref do reflect those taught by Jesus, for our purposes today, Pastor Derek is only going to portray Jesus. Thanks to the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, the beautiful Savior Board of Directors, and its parishioners for understanding. <laughs> Perfect. All right. I want to ask everyone a question. All you have to do is raise your hand, and we're going to find out who you are. Are you a son or a daughter? Raise your hand. Your sons, yes. Um, do you have friends? We all have friends, yes. Um, are you uh, a cousin to anyone? Oh, look at all these names we're identifying with. Are you a student of any kind? Perfect, perfect. Are you, again, this is for portrayal purposes only, a savior? Only one hand. Nice. <laughs> That's right, thanks, we can sit down now. Thank you for playing, who am I? That's right, we have, We all are known by different names, brother, sister, friend, cousin, whatever it might be, student, but we've only got one Savior. We've only got Jesus, who has made our lives complete by going to the cross for us. So I want you to remember that. While we, even Jesus has lots of names. He is known by many names in the Bible. And he is also known by brother, cousin, friend, teacher. It's amazing all the names we are all known by, but only he is known by 
Savior. So I want you to bow your heads and pray with me. Dear Jesus, thank you for being our Savior and for being the one who completes us. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks, guys. A reading from Romans, Paul writes, Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are his judgments and how in, un, inscrutable his ways! For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor or who has given a gift to him that he might be repaid? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, do not think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us use them. If prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, the one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly charged the disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. Dear Holy Spirit, we pray that you would just come and speak to us and that we would hear whatever you would like us to hear this morning in your name and for the sake of the kingdom. Amen. You may be seated. Well, this, this past week, one of the things that I did was I asked a bunch of leaders here at Beautiful Savior, what was their go-to question? And this is what I mean by go-to question. What's the question that they just naturally go to 
uh, to, to get to know someone. Maybe it is, uh, what are you going to have for brunch? Because that's what you're thinking about today. I, I don't know what that is. But here are some of the responses that they had. Uh, what music do you listen to, right? You can learn a lot about the music that someone loves to listen to. What's your favorite kind of ice cream? In fact, right now, let's practice this a little bit. We're in game show mode a little bit. Just to the person next to you, tell them your favorite kind of ice cream. I, I know for those who might be lactose intolerant, this is a painful question, right? In the midst of that. I, you get to know about someone a little bit with questions like that. How about what was your favorite vacation that you've ever been on? Someone loves that question. Uh, what do you do with your free time? You can learn a lot about someone with what they do with their free time. Uh, what's one person in your life that has had the greatest influence on you? And my personal favorite was, do you need to go to the bathroom? <laughs> you know a child, you know a teacher asks a question like that, right? I, I did say, hey, when, I know in your classroom you ask that, but when you go home, do you continue to ask that? And we didn't go much further than that. But questions are important, right? It helps us to get to know people. Now, I, I'm a leadership junkie. Anyone else like a leadership junkie, love to read books, podcasts, different on like what does it mean to be a leader and how to be a better leader? Anyone else out there like that that love those kind of things? A couple? Okay. Uh, one of the things that I have grown in the midst of that is, uh, in fact, I've seen kind of a shift the last couple of years, is uh, probably maybe the last decade, is they say that really good leaders ask really good questions. And it's a little bit of a shift where they used to say you, great leaders would, would tell you what to do and, and would give a little bit more direction, but there's a shift in saying leaders ask really good questions to help develop other people. John Maxwell, one of my favorite authors, has this great quote. He says this, good leaders ask great questions that inspire others to dream more, think more, learn more, do more, and become more. Uh, one of the, the great uh, authors that I love to listen to is Vanessa Van Edwards, and, and she has a whole line of, of books and resources that talk about, like, how do you have deeper connection with people? And her biggest thing is ask more questions. In fact, she says there's levels of questions. There's three levels that she talks about. The first level is small talk. This is the first thing to kind of break into conversation, you know, what are your pet peeves, or it gives you some place to start. The next level she talks is icebreakers, and it helps you to discover like the goals and the values and the worries that people have. And that third one is connection, deeper relationships. And, and it's one of those things that she, you build on to get to know someone a little bit more and so that you can get deeper into connection. However, I believe there is a fourth level that you have to have an established relationship with a person to be able to go there. There are the deep questions of life. And so you can't just naturally go there, but you think about these, the three biggest questions that a lot of people are asking is, where do we come from? What is your purpose? And is there life after death? Those are big questions, right? Right? And I'm guessing a lot of you have wrestled with that or you've thought about that a little bit. And just think about all the books and the resources and the podcasts that have been written over three questions like that. Those are big questions. They're not easy answers. However, I believe that the most important question that has ever been asked or ever will be asked happen in our gospel lesson today between Jesus and his, and his disciples, particularly between Jesus and Peter. And in verse 15, it says this, who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? Now, if we believe Jesus and we believe that he is the truth, Jesus says this, in John 14, 16, he says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I'm the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Now, if you believe Jesus' words that that is truth, it makes this question the most important question you will ever have to consider, that you'll ever have to answer. And it's also the one question that everyone has to answer. 
Who do you say that I am? And I believe that that question, you answer that question correctly, you actually will answer the other big three questions. It informs them. It speaks to them. Well, famous author C.S. Lewis, for those who are familiar with him, he actually had, uh, he has a famous quote that says, the answer to that is, if, when you ask, who do you say that I am to Jesus, there's three answers to that. You either say he's a liar, he's a lunatic, or he's Lord. There's only three answers that are even possible to that. And so think about this. In, in verse 16, Peter comes back and he says this. Jesus asks him a question. Jesus, Peter gives him an answer. He says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus responds back, blessed are you, Peter, for this was revealed to you by my father. Now, a couple things that are really important about that. One is this. We love to kind of with our intellect right we love to study things we love to dive into things and we kind of get this sense of well i discovered this or i i I put a lot of time into this and now i come to this knowledge but but jesus gives an important revelation here and he says this to get to faith it has to be revealed to you peter you got to this faith this answer because the father has given you that answer not, you don't get credit for that. The Father gave that to you. And so one of the things it does is it informs us, even now with people that don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, that one of the things that has to be, it has to be revealed to them. And that's one of the things that when we know people in our life that don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, we, the first thing we have to do is get on our knees and pray for it. I was just with someone last night who has been praying every night for 38 years for every person in their family to come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Every single person in their family would answer, he's not my Lord. 38 years, every night have been praying, Holy Spirit, would you reveal the truth to them? And one of the things I want to ask you today, if your answer, if you're, if you're just sitting here this morning, you're like, I, I wouldn't answer that he's my Lord. I wouldn't, ask, I wouldn't answer that he's my savior, or he's my side. If that's where you're at, I want to encourage you to do two things today. One of them is this. I want to encourage you to pray to the Holy Spirit that he, that he would reveal the truth of who Jesus is in your life. That he would reveal that. And, and, and the other thing is this, to take a little bit of a risk and some vulnerability and to ask someone to walk with you that you can ask questions with that you could ask whatever questions you want, and this person would walk with you. Because I believe that, I believe that the Father in heaven wants to reveal something to you, and, but it takes a willing spirit. It takes an open heart to do that. And I'll tell you this, I know Pastor Joe would say this, uh, I, I, we would love to walk with you wherever you're at in that journey. I know our staff would love to walk with you. Wherever you are, we have leaders here that would love to walk with you, that know him as Lord and Savior, and whatever place you're at in your life, we would love to enter that with you, if that's where you find yourself today. Now, in the midst of this, for all those who know him as Lord and Savior, I believe Jesus asked, a second question that all of us need to pay attention to today. And sometimes in the church, we get lost in this question, that we think that salvation is all about us. And once we know him as Lord and Savior, we can just kind of take it easy. But he, that's not how he led his disciples. And so he asked the disciples another question. He said this, who do others say that I am? And, and this is what I believe he's trying to get the disciples to understand. It's important to pay attention to the people in your life and how they would answer that question. If it is the most important question that we have, we should know the people that we care about the most, how they would answer that. And so one of the questions I have for you today is the people you walk with, do you know how they would answer that? Do you know how your spouse would answer that? Your children, your cousins, your best friend, your neighbors. Do you know how the author of the book you're reading now, how they would answer that? How about the actor of the movie you just saw? The person that is checking out your groceries, how would they answer that question? 
And I believe what Jesus is wanting them to do is to always pay attention, not just to themselves, but to the people that they get to live life with. How would they answer, who do you say that I am? It has an eternal difference in their lives. Now, Barna did some research, and they're one of the leading research places, um, and they did some research on who do people say that Jesus is. And here's some of the things they found. In America, 92% of people believe that Jesus was human, that he lived, that he was on this earth. 92%, that's pretty high. Only 56% believe that Jesus was God. 52% believe that Jesus was sinless, and 56% believe that they are saved by grace. Not because of their works or the things that they've done, but be of a free gift that God has given them through Jesus Christ's death on the cross. Only 56% believe that. Which means this, you take those bottom three, most, about half people, a little a little under, about half the people would say, would answer, who do you say that I am? They would say, Jesus is lying. Because in here, it says he was sinless. In here, it says he's the only way to, to eternal life. In here, he says he was both human and he was God. So most people would answer, or about half of people would answer that he is, he is either lying or he's a lunatic. But for those of us who know that the Holy Spirit has revealed that he is the Christ, he is our Messiah, he is the hope, it changes everything in our life. And so I start to think about through this is, okay, where do we go from here? How do we go out to the other half who do not know him as Lord and Savior, who do not believe the truth of what he says and who he says he is? And I started to think, okay, Jesus, you picked the church to bring the truth and to reveal the truth through the power of the Holy Spirit to the world. Like you established that for us to be the hope of the world, that they would know who he is. And yet I think when I talk with people that are on the outside of the church, that are a little skeptic of the church, I would say that most of them, I don't think, believe that this is the most important question. And I think if they look at us as the church, they're not convinced that we think that's the most important question. If you ask a lot of people, if you would say, what do you think the most important thing in the church is today? The biggest question that the church would ask other people today. And my guess is most people would say something like this. The church cares more about what is your political party? What, is, what denomination do you belong to? What is your lifestyle choices that you are a part of? And there's a whole range of them. What, what, are you pro-choice? Are you, where do you stand on theological issues like alcohol and baptism and name whatever else that is? That I think the outside world today thinks the church thinks those are the most important questions to focus in on. And I'm not saying that they're not important. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't be a part of conversations about that, but what if the world knew us for that question first? Who do you say that I am? What if it was the thing that drove everything that we did? And they say, well, I, I know there's different places that believe different things and stuff like this, but that church, they, the biggest thing that they're about is Jesus. And the biggest thing that they want to know is they want to know that Jesus died for you and that he rose for you, that he has victory for you, and by a relationship with him, you have eternal life. And here's what makes this so important. That question is eternal. The other questions are temporary. You think about that. That is eternal. The answer to that question will tell you whether you're eternally with God your Father or whether you're eternally separated from the God the Father. And if the people in our life, if they don't know him as Lord and Savior, there's eternal consequences for that. That should be the thing that we care about more than anything else. And, and, and please hear me clearly on that. If they don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, nothing else matters. I'm going to say that again. If they don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior in their life, nothing else matters. Those other issues are temporary things. They're not eternal things. 
we always have to start with what's most important in our life. It's the foundation. And I love what he says to Peter next. He says this, Peter, Peter, (laughs) what you said, what you proclaim has been given to you by the Father. And on that, on that faith, on that uh, foundation, I am going to build my church and you are going to be the rock. And he gives Peter and the disciples two promises. He says this, On that foundation that we build, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. Another way to say it is we have the power and the authority of Jesus. We have the power and the authority of the kingdom, which is forgiveness. It is restoration, and it is resurrection. I'm giving that to the church to go out into the world, and I love this. And let us not forget this, church. We don't go out into the world with fear or trembling. We go out with confidence and victory. Why? Because he said this, on that foundation, not even the gates of hell will prevail against that. If you believe Jesus is your Lord and Savior, the gates of hell cannot come against you. It will not. We have victory, and we stand in victory, and it's time for the church to be confident in what Jesus says as truth. And so church, do you have the confidence of your answer of who do you say that he is? If not, we want to walk with you. Come and talk to us. And if you do, Not only do we stand in victory and in joy of what we have, but we stand in in being paying attention to the world around us to bring the truth and the hope of Jesus to all those we interact with. You have the power of the kingdom with you through the power of the Holy Spirit, and not even the gates of hell will prevail against that. And we stand with great certainty and truth in that. And so Jesus, would you, just, would you just use your church to bring the truth and the beauty of the kingdom to this world? Lord, we pray for everyone in our life that doesn't know you as Lord and Savior. God, would you, would, would you reveal it to them? Would you use us? Would you give us the joy of the kingdom to bring that question into the lives of others, Lord, that they would see the difference of a relationship with you and what it means? And Lord, help us not to get stuck on the temporary things before we get stuck on the eternal things. May that be a part of everything we are. We ask this in your holy name and for the sake of your kingdom. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Together in trust and hope, we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please remain standing for prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. We pray that everyone will know you as their Savior. Use each of us to bring the good news of your love to the people in our lives so that we can build your church upon the foundation that is you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for each of our schools as they start a new year. Be with the administration, leaders, and teachers, and give them wisdom, and help each student build a solid foundation. Protect every campus from harm so that it would be a safe place of learning and growth. Help us to be a praying people in each of our schools. Lord, in your mercy. 
Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, be with all who are hurting over the loss of a loved one, especially Margaret Hinchy and family following the passing of her brother. Remind them of your promise that all who call you Lord and Savior will live to the fullness of your promise. May all know comfort, remembering that better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we rejoice with David and Susie Hedstrom upon their marriage. May they always reflect your steadfast love in their lifelong faithfulness to each other. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, you built your church around your disciples and chose us to bring the good news of who you are to others. Empower us by the full authority of the Holy Spirit to boldly testify to the people with whom you have given us favor. May the Holy Spirit reveal through us the full grace that you have given all people for the sake of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We ask all this in your holy name, trusting that what we will be will find fulfillment and completion in your timing. So we ask this in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. And as we get ready to set the table here for the Lord's Supper, if you are communing in your pew, I would invite you to get those elements ready. We also have connect cards in our pew. We invite you to fill those out. Guest, member, uh, whoever you may be, fill those out. You can hand them to the ushers uh, when you get dismissed to the Lord's Supper here in just a couple of minutes. We continue with setting the table. Please rise. Let us pray. Merciful God, you open wide your hand and satisfy the need of every living thing. You have set this feast before us. Open our hands to receive it. Open our hearts to embrace it. Open our lives to live it. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Thank you. Please be seated. And if you are communing in the pew here this morning, I invite you to take uh, the host, the bread, into your hand, and take and eat the true body of Christ given for you. And take the cup and take and drink the true blood of Christ shed for you. Now, if you are coming to receive the Lord's Supper up front here this morning, we invite you to follow our usher's directions as we taste and see the answer to the most important question, that Jesus is our Savior and our Lord.
Now may this true body and true blood of our Lord and Savior strengthen and preserve you in true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in his joy and in his peace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, we give you thanks for nourishing us with the bread of heaven and the wine of love. Jesus, our risen Savior, as you send us into the world, guard us from the power of evil. Keep us in unity with all your people and by your spirit, move us to testify to your grace in our words and actions through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We have a few announcements for you here this morning. Um, And I just want to share as we go through these announcements, I know we've had a few weeks here of some longer announcements today, might be a little bit no different, but the one way that I, I want us to look at that today is that God's doing some amazing things here. And I want to make sure you get a chance to see that, experience that, pay, take part in that. Derek and I want to make sure that you have those opportunities. So the first one here today, if you look to the screen, there's some pictures. Uh, this is a, uh, an Aromo congregation that was here last weekend at Beautiful Savior. And this is 150 second generation uh, Aromo kids who are in our property, on our building, doing things, connecting, growing more, answering that all important question about who Jesus is. And why we want to share this with you is it's just one of the few things that actually happens with our building. And what a blessing this is to see how God uses this place for this time. So we just want to make sure you got a chance to see that. Uh, and also, uh, Demolesh is the pastor of this congregation, and he wanted to just make sure that he sends his thanks and his um, just gratitude for letting us use the building or letting them use the building for this thing. So would you join me in giving thanks and praise to God for this wonderful thing? Lots of neat ways that this building gets used. Lots of amazing ways that God brings into our midst unexpectedly, and yet God continues to use it to make his name known. So it's awesome things. Uh, what, next announcement is we have uh, an assistant director position that is open at our Child Development Center. Information is in our newsletter, so if you'd like to know more about that, please check that out. If you don't get our newsletter, please email the church office, and we can get you subscribed right away. Now, you may have seen a gentleman come down with a what looks like a helmet on, and a kayak paddle. So, Steve, I'll let you take it from here. How about that? Thanks, Pastor. Uh, Good morning. So, for anyone that missed it, a couple weeks ago, we rolled out what we call pop-up activities with the church. Um, So, why am I wearing a bike helmet and carrying a kayak paddle? It is because today, so we had two activities this week. Our first two activities are Wednesday, well attended, a tap room and a bowling activity. Uh, We have our third activity today, which is kayaking and canoeing. If you've never kayaked, if you've never canoed, if you don't know how to do either, that's great. Come and enjoy some friendly fellowship uh, with fellow members. Um, On the screen, you'll see a QR code. I know that it's a little bit small. We tried it last night, didn't work, but For anyone that doesn't know how to use a QR code, we have another copy that you can get up close and personal with out in the the lobby. Um, So super whammodine advertisement and a way to join our Facebook group is out there, along with our contact info. Uh, Don't see anything that you like? Great, initiate something. Build it and they will come. If you like tiddlywinks, if you like bags, if you like biking, uh, just about anything, Initiate a group, build it, and they will come. Uh, enjoy some fellowship, enjoy some friendship, and initiate an event, and uh, let's grow together. Thanks. I was encouraged by my colleague over here to start a tiddlywink game, so we'll see what happens with that, okay? We'll see how that goes, but please come join us. Those are great opportunities, fellowship together, and to get to know more about one another as we continue together in life together. And then we have a video here for our upcoming series together, if you look to the screens. Hey, beautiful Savior, we've had a great summer here full of fun and and learning about Jesus through our vacation Bible schools, and we've had family fun nights, just a lot of great times for connection, and it's been so great to, to get to 
know you and connect with you in those times. And we've got some more times coming up here as we look to the fall. Starting September 10th, uh, we will actually be worshiping as one congregation that day at 10 a.m. So one service that Sunday as we do our rally day, our, our kickoff day. There will be a regular five o'clock service on September 9th as part of our Saturday night worship. But Sunday morning, just one service at 10 a.m. because we've got some great games and fun activities that will be coming afterwards. So we hope you can come join us for some more connections, some more community. And what else do we got, Derek? Well, I, I gotta ask, on, on that 10th, are you gonna get wet? Like, should they bring a bucket of water that, to continue our summer theme? That, that's a fair question, I'll answer safely no. Oh. No, it's good. Leave me dry. Leave okay. me dry. Just want to make sure that they were prepared. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that next weekend, I'm telling you, it's going to be a great kickoff. Uh, the 16th and 17th, we're going into a new series called Together. And you heard last Sunday already that uh, we want to connect people. That's an important part of who we are at Beautiful Savior. And so that next Sunday and Saturday, we are launching into, it's gonna be a great time. It's a chance for you to connect to new small groups. Uh, it's a chance for leaders to get to know their small groups. And we are really excited about that six weeks and what God's gonna do as we do together, both in uh, adults and kids and children's, all that stuff. Uh, it's gonna be a great, great fall here yeah. at Beautiful Savior. Agreed, agreed. So we wanna invite you to come join us and be a part of our community here together as we get ready for the fall and all that comes as God has it for us. Hey. I don't know about you guys, but watching Pastor Joe get hit with the water is the funniest thing ever. Can't watch that enough. Uh, I just wanted to give you a quick update on our groups. Uh, we set a really high goal, a God-sized God goal uh, with groups. Right now we have 47 47 groups with 56 leaders. So you guys are awesome. Let's hear it for that. <laughs> Today being the first sign up, we've been asked, because uh, we're attacking you as you come in and, and you leave the church to get everybody to sign up. Uh, sorry about that, but not sorry. Uh, but I've been asked, you know, I've been in a group for 20 years. Why am I signing up? Uh, because we were already established. We're trying to get all the information together. So if you've been in a group for 30 years or you're just starting a group, please, please, please sign up. Um, uh, at, at last count, when I left there, we were at 89 people who signed up just this weekend. So if we can eclipse that number that we had uh, for the Forgiving Challenge, that would be fantastic. But uh, please stop by. Uh, we've got two tables set up out here. Um, there's a lot of people with Together shirts on that will probably grab you and uh, put an iPad in front of you and say, please sign up for your small group. So thanks. And just to be clear, Luke, when they grab you, it's going to be like the Christian love grab, correct? Like, absolutely. Not like the... Absolutely. Good. Good. Absolutely. Okay. Good. So don't be afraid when you walk into our gathering space today. That's the last thing I'd want you to do, all right? So lots of opportunities, lots of great ways to connect here at Beautiful Savior. And I got to tell you, it's just an amazing thing that we get to have these kinds of conversations, these kinds of opportunities. Would you join me in giving thanks and praise to the staff and volunteers who are making these things happen? This is you guys, this is your staff working to try to, to help you and to help others know more about Jesus. And so come join us in these amazing opportunities that God has put before us. So would you please stand? And thank you for being here today. Thank you for being a part of our worship. Uh, we want you to come back next week and come join us as we continue learning more about who Jesus is in our lives. But in the meantime, receive his name as you get ready for the rest of the day, the rest of the week, knowing who he is and having that opportunity and that ability to share who he is with others. So the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Let's sing.
Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.